Alright, alright, alright. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We got ourselves some Bly games here on Rod Huset Station. That's right, I just looked up the Swedish pronunciation. I think it means like town hall or something. That's beside the point. I'm going to call it Rod Huset Station from now on because it sounds funny. Uh, Bly's in the top right. He's a cheesy Zerg. He's up against Mana, the Protoss in the bottom left. And this map is made for weird strategies. It's a best of three, it's a Katowice qualifier. And I cannot wait to see what Bly brings out. And also, can Mana, our Polish micro god, actually find a way to mess it up? Can he throw some spice back in Bly's face? Because I think Mana's great in small micro situations. He's very good with the micro, the tactics, the comebacks. And Bly basically just cheeses constantly and throws crazy weird stuff at you and forces you into, a, into those situations. So I don't know if Mana's going to know how to handle Bly's BS in terms of the build orders, but I do expect him to micro very well under pressure, no matter how chaotic the game gets. Some players fall apart under pressure, but I always say you put Mana down 50 supply, give him a handful of units, and he suddenly becomes the best Protoss player in the world. The only problem for him as a player is, well, you know, it's only when he's behind and he's got those small-scale skirmishes. He doesn't usually bring that same level of refinement, I guess, to like a very straight-up standard macro game. You know, a guy like Showtime who can hit the most perfect build to eight minutes every game, that's not Mana. Mana will just somehow... You won't even, like, know why unless you really look for the tiny details. But you're like, why does he have five less probes than Showtime at six minutes? Like, or why why is his army a little smaller? And you're like, well, this is weird. And it's just because Mana is a micro player. He's a guy who was a Warcraft 3 player originally. He's very good at the constant interaction. But his build order, like, refinement and obsessiveness isn't as powerful for him as it is his, his, his uh, intuitive understanding of the match. But anyway, Lair's already on the way. Bly's, Bly's doing a two base. Mana sees it. Mana has been this whole time trying to do this. Ooh, Mana's going Twilight Dark Shrine. Ooh, he's trying hard to block it. Come on, come on, Bly, Bly, Bly. Oh, Bly does not quite see it. I'll check the vision. No, he doesn't see it. And the Adept Shades in at the same time kills two Zerglings. Uh-oh. Okay, this is this is not looking like the greatest start for Bly. He's been scouted by Mana. His own scouting's been blocked, so he doesn't realize it's a Twilight opening. He might expect Stargate, which is not it. The Adept gets a, a worker kill on top of two Lings. Oh, no. Good pullback, though, on that last one. Does manage to save it. Proxy's going up down here. Mana's going to DT rush him. And you know what? Bly's such a cheeky bugger. Why not be a cheeky bugger yourself? Get in his face. And it's such a weird thing, because, like, what do we normally see on this map? Sky Toss against the greediest Zerg build of all time. Bly, on the other hand, looks like he's rushing Mutalisks, one of his specialties. And Mana is going to be rushing Dark Templar. So, I mean, the fast layer means you can make Overseers to react. But that's if you see the Dark Templar coming, which I don't think he has any idea of just yet. That being said, he's built two spores because he thought they might be oracles, and now he's realizing, well, there's no oracles. Okay, it's got to be like adepts or DTs or something like that. Infestation pits on the way, which tells us, I think we're seeing a cheeky butthole, guys. Uh, that, that, that's going to be a Nidus Worm cram filled with Swarmos, I think. The cheekiest Nidus Worm you can do. The Nidus looks a bit like a butt, if you look at it. Yes, it's got teeth, but you know, Zerg butts are built different, what can I say? <laughs> um... But yeah, loading that up with Swarmos is one of the cheekiest things you can do. And if you look at the architecture of this map, you can throw it here, here, here. Anywhere around these areas is huge. Dark Templar runs in, gets one, two drones. Oh, and he's going to get out. Nice move for Mana there. Ah, oh, okay. Zigged when he should have zagged. Gets taken out. This Dark Templar gets away. Not too bad for either side. One Dark Templar getting two drones. That's not the end of the world. More importantly, did he scout what he saw? Oh, he scouted the infestation pit. Okay, let's go to let's go to Mana's vision. Let's try to get in his head. Because like right now, you're on three gate, two base, with what? A stalk of 40 T's in a prism. So okay, yeah, okay, so check this out. You can see he's spreading units around his base. He's trying to catch the Nidus worm and kill it the moment it goes up. So yeah, that's why he's tracking the overseer to a certain extent. He's spreading his DTs out. He's like, okay. Oh, he's gonna morph Archons. Okay, okay. He could do an Archon drop, but I would probably be focused on using that defensively if I was him. Zealots try to warp in on the front. The Zerglings surround them. Nice moves for Bly right there. And Bly's first six Swarmos are on the way. We've got two Archons coming across. Oh, you know what? Okay, so, so he said, wait, I can't defend. There's too many angles. I better go and attack. And maybe I force you to use those Swarmos defensively. Um, Bly made a big mistake this game. He did not build a Roach Warren. He's building a spine crawler. He's got four queens, but Archons are very tough to deal with with just a few queens and Zerglings. If you can get out six or eight roaches, it's going to make it much easier. But right now, look at that. Those Archons doing very well. Oh, good links around, though. Does force the pickup. Nidus Worm goes up on the other side of the map. Dark Templar is nearby. He's going to come in and catch it. 
Good catch. And look at this Stalker kills an Overseer down the bottom as well. Mana's hanging on like a champ. I feel like he had so few tools to handle this uh, Knight of Swarmos, but he's shutting it down and he's killing a lot of drones. Blah, you gotta get those drones out of there. The Spore Crawler does a lot of damage to the prism though. You gotta be careful. A couple Locusts get used defensively there. Swarmos pop out in the front. They also have to use their Locusts to defend themselves from the Dark Templar. Um, that being said, uh, Units Lost Type is still in Mana's favor right now and he's up. Almost 20 workers with a third base halfway built. He walks in Dark Templar on the front. Mana does not want to go home and defend. He knows it's nearly impossible to defend from every angle. So he's going to attack. Sometimes the best defense is a good offense. And that really stands true with Swarmo situations. And Archon goes down to the Queens. The Archon's taking a lot of damage. He does take out yet another Overseer. Two Overseers and Overlord. Expensive units going down. Swarmos are here. If he can get a Swarmos wave in there, that's going to be massive. Mana has to pull back with the Archons there. The gateway's going to go down. Guys, he has two Archons, a Stalker and Adept. Mana only has six gateways he's making stalkers but these swarmos are going to ruin his day he's trying to distract bly right now but it is not working bly's roach horns up he's building eight roaches he's making burrow bly throwing locusts into the back door mana's going to try to come forward to defend Wow! oh my lord ow 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 good hold position for bly notice the moment he holds position rather than going after the stalkers and getting stuck behind each other the locusts stop and they kill five probes not a bad wave but mana's really delayed that first wave so he's still up 15 workers Bly's going to need a lot more damage than that. And all Mana needs to do is distract him and buy time. If Mana can buy enough time, he'll be good. And look at that. Stalkers hunt down the Nidus. Oh, you know what? He needs observers. He actually needs observers. And the reason is this Overlord on this pillar can just keep throwing Nidus Worms at the front. We've got another wave of Locusts in there. Probes running to the left. The Locusts could have clicked on the Nexus, but Bly is distracted. He loses a third hatchery and he doesn't target the Locusts. He does get five probes, but once again, that should have been a dead Nexus. And that is because Mana's harassment is so good. Mana still is losing mining time, losing workers. But look, his third base is full of workers. Stalkers went around. They cleaned up that Nidus Worm on the right. And the Stalkers now with good map control are going to be doing some stuff. But he doesn't realize there's a new Nidus Worm on the front. Definitely worth popping these out. But oh, you don't want to get caught. You want to get back inside. Get back inside. Okay, he saves all the Nidus Worms. Good. All the, all the Swarmos, sorry. <laughs> he puts all of the five uh, Nidus Worms inside the Swarmos. You're like, okay, I don't know what we're talking about anymore. Uh, nice old position again. Look at him killing a lot of probes. That was a really successful wave for just a few locusts. Nine probes. Ooh, juicy damage. Stalkers and Archons on the front. Once again, Mana says defending is for cucks and tryhards. I am neither of those. And I'm going to do it this way, man. Stalker, Archon on the front. The Archon drop comes in behind. If he could kill those Ravages, that'd be massive. 37 life, 7 life, one more shot. But the Ravages barely finish morphing in time. The Archons have to pick off nice transfusers. Roach Ravager Queen, Spine hanging out. The Roach Horn going down. Good blink back there. Does lose just one Stalker. If you can get rid of the Roach Horn, that'll be big. I'd love to see Mana, uh, sorry, Bly rebuild the uh, Roach Horn in the back of his base. Overlord is up here. He's going to throw the Nidus on the inside of the base, realizing there's a Dark Templar on the outside. Nice move for Bly. You don't want to use your Swarmos defensively because at the moment he sees Locust, Mana will just run away. Oh, the Stalker's running forward. He's actually dodging the Biles and fighting on the front. The Archon's getting saved as well. Is this worth it for Mana? Yes, he kills a bunch of Ravagers. Does lose quite a few units though. And the Locusts are going to pop Nidus Worm Swarmos inside the base. Oh, this is really rough right now for Mana. Though that is so many Locusts inside his base. Luckily, there is no uh, detection. The Overseer is morphing on the pillar, but it's not there just yet. The Roach Queen did chase a bit too far. Bly got a bit lazy at home. Okay, he's got to do nothing but Mass Roach, I think, to be able to take this out. 13 probes going down to that Locust Wave. The Nidus Worm does save what's remaining of the Swarmos. Roach Ramager coming forward. Oh, he looks for the Bile. Not quite able to get it. Okay, Bly right now has a third base, but he hasn't transferred workers. His main's oversaturated. He builds a new Roach Horn and a Spire. This game is hectic. Managing the Nidus Worm, the Mutas, and everything else is very difficult. The APM is very high for both players, but I guarantee you a lot of that is them kind of panicked, panicking and just clicking places because this is not a position even Bly has a lot of uh, practice in. You've got Overseers going down here as well. Uh, units Lost Tab is in favor of Bly, but he's down 10 workers. There's three bases mining. Let's look at the income tab. Mana has been ahead for five minutes on the income. And Bly was only slightly ahead before that. And that's going to grow. That's going to keep growing if, if Mar uh, Bly doesn't transfer workers, which he hasn't done just yet. That's very painful. Extra Swarmost attempt on the front. The Archon does not see it just yet. He's trying to get out there with Stalkers as a fourth base goes up. Okay, he finally transfers those workers. I was like, look, if he doesn't transfer those workers, he's kind of screwed in the long game. And on top of it is Mana. Uh-oh, Bly, get out of there. Get out of there. Run, 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 run. Bly, oh no. Uh-oh. Okay, his army's here to defend, though. Archon, I think an Archon died there. And then the Disruptor's in the prism. He actually diverted a few Locusts into the base. If he can land those in the mineral line, hold position, that would be amazing. 
But of course, he's busy microing on the front. The Disruptor's looking for him right now. Oh, the ball drop, the ball drop. But the Nidus Worm does allow those Swarmos to pop back inside. Oh, good flanking ball shot. Mana flanks him, drops Trail, turns that ball upside down, and does turn a Ravager inside out as well. Roach is jumping on top, getting some Stalker kills, though. Very important. Fighting Stalkers off creep. The Stalkers can out-micro them, but it takes a lot of attention. Most importantly for Bly, he's got Swarmos up on the bottom. Even though he's down in workers this whole time, you got to realize his army supply is so much higher, and every time those Locust Waves go in, it's free damage. So it makes up for his income disparity. Oh, the Dark Templar will help defend here. The Roachling trying to hunt down as many of those Stalkers as they can, but I think Bly has to back away. More Locusts coming in from behind. It's a big Locust Wave, but they're kind of trickling in. And, okay, he does do a hold position there. The Archon with Battery Overcharge tanks a lot of damage. And it's going to be seven, maybe eight probes. Go down eight probes. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not the impact you want. I really feel like if, if he could somehow hit multiple mineral lines at once, Mana might just fall apart. Like, he's not going to have the numbers to defend everything. But look, once again, Mana says, screw defending. The best defense is a good offense. Let's go pedal to the metal. And there's seven Mutas on the way. Five already out. Twelve Mutal is building. So Bly has given up on the Roach Swarmos game. He said, I'm going to swap into Mutas, which is a great idea to take advantage of uh, Mana. But 12 is a lot of Mutalists, which means he's only got 6 Roaches and 7 Queens right now. Ball does get dropped. Ball goes flying in. Second Ball shot gets cancelled. Hatcher on the right side gets killed. He's going to immediately rebuild it. Oh, a bit greedy for Bly. And he gets punished. Mana's like, are you sure you want to rebuild that? Your army hasn't pushed me away yet. He clicks on it. So he gets a cancel on the Hatchery. Then he kills it with the next wave. Archon still standing strong. This guy tanked the previous wave very nicely. But I think at this point, it's a runaway. Yeah, that... that Nexus is going to go down for sure. Even if you battery overcharge, there's no way to save that. He knows it's uh, a waste of an overcharge to do so. Mutas on the left get 14 probes. Uh oh, but watch out on the front. If he doesn't have enough Roach Queen, he might get overwhelmed. He did rebuild the Roach Horn. He's building Zerglings right now. Good spreadies from Bly. Great transfuses as well. But, and now the Disruptor Shot's down. Oh, he moves forward a bit. Derpy on the micro. Okay, if he could get rid of the prism, this would be massive, but he's not quite able to. He tries to push forward. He is killing some stalkers right here. Muta's flying around. There is an Archon. Oh, the Archon's going to get surrounded. Nice engagement there for Bly. But there's more stalkers and a battery overcharge behind it. He cannot fight into that. Meanwhile, he's losing the fight in the front. Mana pushing him back. As we said, attacking beats you. If I have a big enough army there, it doesn't matter if I'm taking damage at home. The Mutalists almost all dying. There's only five of them that escape. That means seven Mutalists did go down. The Stalkers and the Disruptors trying to pull back right now. This game is action-packed. And most importantly, look at this. That is a huge success. Forcing the Locust to be used defensively is in of itself a victory. Uh, Bly needs to keep his Mutalists on the other side of the map. And he's actually mass rebuilding Mutalists right now, which I don't agree with. I think all he needs to do is make Roaches and Lings. If he gets a critical mass of Roachling, he can beat the Stalkers in a fight. But because of the Disruptors, I think he feels like, oh, the more Roachling, the better targets. I'm going to go Mutas. But look at what's going to happen now, because the army is in between the Mutalisks and home. So if he pulls back with his Mutalisks, they're going to kind of fly over these Stalkers. And he's already in a pretty rough position right now. Mutalisks trying to fly out. They're kind of flying over the Stalkers a little bit. He goes after the Archons on the retreat. Oh my god, the Archons not watching! I mean, the two Archons beat Mutalisks pretty hard, but they take a lot of damage. One Archon goes down, Stalkers push back the Mutalisks. Nice pickoff for Mr. Bly. Ten Ravages, more Roaches on the way. The work account's very close right now. Vincom, very close. But, oh, he used a whole Locust Wave at once. I don't agree with that. Actually, he's going to fight it front on. Mana, the Brave Dog, just fights it front on. He loses a few Stalkers. But that means he can keep shoving in. And, oh, God, this fight could decide the entire game. Okay, Ravager goes down right now. Dark Templar, Stalkers and Disruptors are here. This might actually be a win condition for Mana. If he can push in right now, because even though the army supplies ahead, most of that is Ravagers and Swarmos, the lowest quality units that you can possibly have, not to mention Swarmos right now are off cooldown. Oh, he's clumped up. Oh, man. It's, it's being choked up around these buildings. You just can't dodge Disruptors in these scenarios. It's not possible. Spinecrawler lands some hits on the Disruptors. That Disruptor shot was a bit... Uh, to go in the wrong direction, but it finally goes back. Mutas fly in, they don't find any damage. Third base never got rebuilt. Fourth base is now mining again. 54 probes against 42. Yet again, another Locust Wave all going at once. He's going to take out the Colossus, but no! Mana's micro, too good, saves it, pulls back, and when those Locusts run out, he's just going to go right back in for more. Oh, these Locusts need to split up their waves, I think, but against such a big army, if you go with too few Locusts, Protoss just kills him. Doesn't take any damage. Oh no, he's on move command! Minor on move command. Loses a bunch of Stalkers. He blinks forward, tries to get some revenge. He isn't quite able to land it. Nidus in the main base. Mutalisks are going to find only a single Stalker to defend. That is not enough to defend. Neither side has had upgrades for this entire game, guys. There is a Forge. An Evo Chamber died for a Bly. But no upgrades for Attack Adava. It's just straight up. Pedal to the metal. I'm going to fight. Fight, fight, fight. 
He's going to find a lot of probes in the open. Nice pickoffs for these mutilists. They've got to get out of there, though, when those stalkers and archons come south. Eight probe kills is pretty good. Get out of there. The locusts go in yet again. Looks like maybe they got a disruptor. He does take out the other disruptor. Oh, and an archon. And an archon. If you kill the colossus, they'll be massive. He gets another uh, archon. He does kill another archon. The colossus gets saved. But for how long? The Roach Ravager jumping on top of it. This is an amazing fight for Bly. Back at home, the Mutalisks dancing over to that third base. They could do even more damage as well. Biles take out the Prism. The Colossus will fall. And an amazing trade for Bly. That could seal the deal. But actually, I mean, his economy's not ahead. And he is going to lose the tail end of this fight. He doesn't have enough units rallying out. Remember, he's on a lower economy. He's up 40 uh, supply right now. If he can get a good Locust Wave or two, this could be game-changing. But there's a lot of Battery Cannon, a few Archons and Stalkers. Let's see what this Locust Wave can do. Bly, man. Remember, he just never has a, a proper army. So even when his supply is this far ahead and I go, oh, I think he's won. The thing is, even eight Stalkers is like a problem for him right now. Locusts come in. They're going to take out the Nexus. Natural Nexus goes down. That the base was already pretty heavily mined out. But nonetheless, important damage to slow down mana. Roach is getting some pretty good trades. He might have to stop chasing, though, as that Dark Templar comes down. Units Lost Tab is a bit in favor of Bly right now. And that's why he's winning this game. Because even though he's been down to work, as he's finding efficiency. But look, yeah, as I said, he overstayed a bit too long there. And I want to see another Locust Wave. If he can take out this base as well, all he needs at home is Roaches. If he can just mass enough Roach Ravager, and he's got a lot of gas, so he can turn them all into Ravagers. He just needs to defend with Roach Ravager. His Swarmos will win him the game eventually. And he's still got six Mutalists on the map that he can keep harassing with. That is a win condition. He's building more Roaches. I'd love to see him make more Ravages right now. He sees more Stalkers warping in. Tries to get a Stalker and then pull back, but he ends up getting blinked on. Loses a Roach or two, and he's got to be very careful. Swarmers do take out yet another Nidus. That could be Checkmate. Mana pushing in right now. The Roaches, I think he might need to pull Drones, but there's two Archons. Ooh, and actually, wait, 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 wait. His main's mined out. He's only got one base. Bly's on one base mining. Mana's got one base. His main's mined out. So they're both on one base mining. 18 minutes into the game, they're both on one base mining. A an extra swarm is building. I really think Bly just needs to spend all of his money making like 17 Ravages. If he makes 17 Ravages, I think he can do it. On the other hand, how do you win this as mana? You've lost your Disruptors. You've got 15 Stalkers with plus one. You got his Micro. It's all about Micro. And that's what he's doing. Double Archon drop in, the back, drop in the back, trying to deny some mining on the only remaining base for Bly. By the way, he's already lost a few mineral patches here as well. The Archon drop going a bit deep. He does save them at the last second. The Mutalisks are out. There's six Muters. They're going to fly home to try and catch the Prism right now. Um, can he, if he can just get more Swarmos on the front, that's going to be a game winner. Muters, two Muters just got shot down. 13 Mutalisks in total. You can't chase down an Archon drop with only five Muters, guys. He's trying to catch it when Mana's not looking. Bly's like, if I can catch you when you're not looking, I can kill the Prism. But it's a speed prism with two archons inside. So this dance, I love that he's looking for the moment of inattention. That's why it's so stressful playing Bly, because he will look for those like those little moments where you're not watching. Oh man, if he kills this base, it's going to be big. I think he's got it. I think he's going to get that base. This is the only base mining right now for Mana. He has a new Nexus coming up, but oh damn, that is deadly. And he should be able to kill the Nexus if he targets it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nexus goes down, right? Oh, okay, barely. Targeted it just in time. Roaches keep trying to catch him, not looking. They don't get it. Stalkers do clean up the Nidus Worm. There's still 14 Swarmos alive right now. Tunneling Claws is on the way. Um, I don't know where the Mutalisks are, though, right now. Mutalisks are going to come in and try to take out the Stalkers as well. But that's enough Stalkers now. With uh, Plus One's not done, but enough Stalkers to one-shot. Another two Mutalisks went down. He's trying to build more Mutalisks this Bly, but he just needs Roach Ravager, in my opinion. He, he's thinking, oh, God, this army's too scary with Blink. Like, Roaches aren't that efficient. But I think he just needs enough Roach Ravager to defend these sorts of moves. The, oh, the Archon drop. He really wants to clean up that Archon drop. If three more drones go down. He's going to have to put his drones back on mining. On the right side, he's fighting with less Roaches, though. He needs a lot more Roaches and Ravagers to deal with these Stalkers. Mana is getting an insanely good fight on the right side, but he's going to lose the Prism on the left. Okay, the Archons will go down. Good catch here for Bly. He's trying to pull back weak Mutalisks, but he does lose another Mutalisk or two. He's going to lose this new base on the right side. Okay, what the hell is going on? This game is so tight right now, but the problem for Bly is there's nothing on the other side. He's sending a Mutalisk across. If he had a Nidus killing this base right now, it could be game over. But instead, there is a base mining in the back and a new base about to finish, whereas Bly... Only has a few mineral patches mining. His his fourth base died again. So he's got nine mutas. He's building five more. So he's going to go for like a big pack of mutalisks to try and kind of keep uh, mana on the defensive. And he's basically saying, I'm just not going to expand anymore. The problem is that means he's only got three roaches. So he has no raw fighting power. Stalker blinks at the mutalisks. The mutalisks are like, you realize it's, it's many verse one. 
Does lose a Mutalisk as well, though. Oh, no, no, no! Blinds are watching! Oh, God, oh, God. He loses one Mew to make it two. Third one does not quite get one shot, but that fourth one... And he gets the final shot. Oh, my gosh. Way too many Mutas dying right now. More Mutas are flying through the middle of the map. Those could get caught as well. Mana's gonna catch him. Watch out, mate! Oh, Mana does blink. He's gonna take out another one or two Mutalisks. Two more Mutalisks going down. No, 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 Bly! Oh my god, at the end of all this chaos, Bly's in trouble. He's trying to micro on the left, but the DTs are forcing those Locust Waves out from far away. Mana fighting from behind like an absolute legend. Dude, this has turned into such a fun series. Three Zealot drop coming in. The Roaches will deal with it. A new fourth base is trying to build on the right side for Bly. He sends the Locust in, but not early enough. They were a bit too far away. They get caught. The Mutas get caught. Another two Mutalists could go down. Yep, another two Mutalists go down. Up to 26 Mutas dead, only four out. This investment into Mutas was not yet. If he went Roach Ravager, I think maybe he could have done it. Because I think just five Swarmos plus... Uh, five five Mutas plus throwing up Nidus uh, Swarmos with it is always going to be impossible for him to deal with. If you can keep getting those Nidus's up. But he loses the fourth again. It gets cancelled. He's trying to make Ravages now is Bly. But remember, his income is almost non-existent at this point in the store because he's just going to run in. And look at this. He's just running in and, and focusing the Ravages down. And then as the Locusts come out defensively, he pulls back and he says, I'll be back in 20 seconds when those Locusts are gone. That is nasty. Very well played there. Swarmos are on the right side. As I said, if these guys were getting in a bit more frequently, he would have been denying the mining. Oh, he leaves his units behind. Loses a Stalker there. Slightly lazy for Mana. Didn't pull quite far enough back. But yeah, yeah, if he could have killed this base and then this base on the left, Mana wouldn't have the money. But if we look at the income graph, now you can see Mana's been up to over uh, like a thousand resources a minute advantage. Stalkers blink in, kill the Ravagers. He takes out the Spines and then he's going to take out the Queens as well. The Swarmos going down. Oh no, Bly losing so many units. There isn't any detection here. More Roaches and Queens try to come down. Transfusers try to land, but the Stalkers, they can volley anything down. Healing is not going to be enough right now. Mutas are in the natural trying to kill probes. There's not that much income, but one base income is far superior to Bly, who only has dregs on that mineral base up to the top left that we've got talking about there. The Stalkers try to pull back right now. An absolute barn burner of a game one in this best of three. And, and I can't believe this is only game one. I can't believe it. Holy crud sickles. I think Mana has it now. I, I mean, the Mutas are still killing him, but he's got economy. He's got economy. Bly doesn't, and Bly just can't fight in front on. He's only got the Swarmos Nidus, which obviously, yes, technically there's unlimited damage Swarmos can do, but you can see with the Stalker Micro and the Observer, he can now clear the Burrowed units, and he's just got too much of a critical numbers advantage, where with Blink Micro, he's never going to lose any of these units. And that's why I was saying earlier, you really need like a critical mass of Roach Ravager. Obviously an Infestor or two would have been amazing. Because, but, but I think he's already managing Mutalisks, a Swarmos Nidus key, and Roach Ravager Queen on the defense. Adding Infestors to that as well. I mean, there's a certain amount of complexity a player can handle in a scrappy game like this before they're actually just adding extra problems for themselves to deal with. Microing Infestors. I can understand why he didn't do it. Obviously, from our armchair, we're like, well, if you just played like an AI, you should have done it. But the Stalker Micro is too good. Remember, Bly was ahead in the resources lost. He's now down 5,000, and he has to tap out, and that's only game one, baby. GG. Alrighty then, let's go game two, guys. We've got Mana in the bottom right side. Unfortunately uh, for Bly, clutching that game with the Stalker Aggression. It's so funny, like, I always love it, right? Because people are like, man, Swarmos Nidus is, like, so hard to stop. And it kind of is, but I think Mana showed how much weaker it is if you attack. Like, if you never attack a Swarmos Nidus player, Swarmos seems so broken and overpowered because they're just, like, choosing where and when to throw these free units into your base. We saw the power <laughs> of what happens if you just go out there and uh, and deal with them in a different way. Now, that drone is hiding out Oh, Proxy Hatch! Proxy Hatch! Bly's going for Proxy Hatch. Mana sees it though. Mana can block. Mana can block. As long as he stays in front of that, he can block. But he was worried about the hatchery and the wall off. Oh, good blocking! As long as you keep a probe uh, on top of the drone, then he won't be able to build the hatchery. This is really good play. Hatchery goes down at home, but it's already about 20 seconds late. Hasn't built a spawning pool or a gas just yet. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's delaying the Nexus slightly, you could argue. And actually, Mana's messed up. Mana's got four workers on gas. Mana was so frantically microing there. He was so worried about the proxy hatchery that he kind of screwed his own build order. He's mined uh, way more gas than he needed to, and his minerals is super late. So, Bly ends up going for a gas steal here, just to, as, as a sympathy prize. Takes a spawning pool and a gas bind. His build's kind of bad. However, Mana's Nexus still ends up being quite delayed for a Nexus before Cybercore. That's meant to go down at minute 23, minute 25, I believe. And it went down closer to a minute 35. So about 10 seconds delay, maybe a little more than that. Um, and then the Cybercore will go down there as well. 
So Minus build's a little sloppy. If he wants to take a second gas, he'll have to take it on the natural expand, as that extractor is up in the main base as well. Now, if Bly really wanted to, he could have kept microing and... Oh, look at this. He's sending a drone out. He was hoping Mana wasn't looking so he could sneak past it, and he does. The reason is because his his, his hatchery was so late, he's decided, screw this. I'm going to go straight for a third hatchery because my build's kind of wonky, and I'm going to take that before building the Overlord, which I think is actually quite decent. He's going to build four Zerglings as well, and he's got the Overlord over there on the natural near the pillar to help defend. First Adepts on the way, Warp Gate, and a Twilight Council again for Mana. You know, I, part of me is like, why would you do that? And the other part is like, I absolutely know why you would do it. So I also am a, I, I, when I play Protoss, I am a specialist in Twilight openings and some Robo openings. I am okay at some Stargate builds, but I got to tell you, if you aren't an expert with Stargate builds and you're playing a cheesy Zerg, it <laughs> feels much easier to just make ground units and get good upgrades for them. Like, you know, Glaives, Charge, Blink, whatever it is. Um... Because, like, guys like Bly will find ways to get queens on your side of the map. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, my, my single Void Ray can defend cheese, right? And you're like, oh, no, he has three queens. The Void Ray does nothing. Oh, crap. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it, you end up being really fragile, even though technically if you play it at the highest level, I think most Protoss players would argue that the safest way to play is, like, Oracle or Void Ray opening. Glaive Adepts is on the way right now for mana. And, oh! Oh, oh, oh kind of split fires doesn't kill any units there but at least he doesn't take any damage he's only forced eight zerglings out Bly's actually uh droning up pretty hard in this aftermath which uh I mean Bly's macro like I said normally not his strong suit but I think he's doing pretty well considering how derpy the start was and I mean it was kind of derpy for both sides so we're not going to be seeing crisp timings from either player the natural gas there is mining 12 workers on this natural oh mana's forgetting his pylon okay no no, no. there we go he remembers it I was like, dude, if he doesn't start that pylon like right away, he's going to hit a massive 46 supply block. And that's very easy to forget when your build's being messed up. Oh, good catch. Bly gets an adept kill. Juicy. He's building two more queens. So he's going to go five queens here. No Roach Warren, and that's a problem. Okay, Roach Warren goes down. Glaives is already almost finished, but there's not many adepts just yet. And actually, he's going six gates, guys. Oh, he's going six gates. If the Overlord can see these gateways, which he's going to see at least a few gateways coming in now, and that itself is a massive sign of aggression. Why are you on three gases and making a whole ton of gateways with the Twilight Council? He knows... Yeah, he saw he saw all six gateways. He knows. That is a huge, huge uh, scout there for Bly. He's building a spine. I actually would like to see Bly drone up a little bit more. He's only on 39, so he's lower than Protoss on workers. Now that he's been scouted, I'd love to see Mana just take a third Nexus and get himself ahead a little bit. While Bly is, is like massing Zerglings, Queens, Spine, and then Roaches to defend. Now, on the plus side, doesn't need to leave drones exposed in that third base. Adepts are going to shade to the right side. With the only one Queen there, I wouldn't have minded him trying to kill the Spine Crawler. If you can stop that Spine getting up, it'll open that third up for future harassment. Spore Crawler going down. That's just in case Dark Templar come in. Just having one Spore Crawler available. Because he's like, oh, this doesn't seem that committed of a pressure. Did you build a Dark Shrine? Where's your money? But as, as, as we can see... It's because he's actually probed back up a little bit. He is now building a very delayed Dark Shrine. I was not expecting that. A 5 minute 20 Dark Shrine. Man is like, I'm just doing things now. He's like, I'm, I'm basically, I have a feeling Dark Templar will be good. This is the sort of game. That's kind of how you have to play against these guys. Like Bly. Bly is going to throw you into deep waters. And sometimes you just need to trust your instincts. If you have good enough star sense, you know, just trust your instincts. And that's something, you know, you can hone. I think for, for amateur players and stuff, they, they hear me like coaching and doing bronze to GM and, and being like, no, 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 don't just make stuff up on the fly. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Man is making stuff up on the fly, some completely untested thing he's never done. But it's like it's like he, he senses a pattern. It's like on the edge of consciousness, he's like, oddly late Dark Templar could actually be good in this scenario. And this is something I do one in 57 games when the early game gets messed up and the Zerg is tunnel vision on trying to get me with some big attack and then i surprise them with the dark templar backstab and it keeps me in the game or something you know it's it's like that that really deep pattern recognition where it's it's only on the edge of your consciousness but it is something that actually harks back to a previous experience now he's building multiple immortals which is great but that's a lot of roachling coming in he needs those immortals over here mana is kind of not aware of what's happening i thought he saw the army heading over here get out of there mate get out of there oh god he's gonna lose the pylon the pylon could go down. I think focusing the pylon is probably the, the, the best thing you could do here as Bly. Yeah, yeah. Just focus the pylon so the battery overcharge can't do anything. He's going to recall uh, the prism home, but the immortals aren't there. There's two immortals in the natural. Oh, this is like one of those classic situations where you don't realize he's actually attacking you. 
If you had two Immortals behind those Adepts and Sentries, you smash that army. But instead, he loses his, his, a bunch of Adepts, loses some Sentries. And now he finds himself in an awkward scenario where he's like, I have six Stalkers. And you're like, okay, cool. Why? And he's like, oh yeah, I don't even have Blink. Like, Stalkers are a trash tier unit right now. He's going to try and get across there with a Dark Templar. Does Bly realize? We're on Bly's camera. Bly's doing the double Roach prong, guys. Roach is on the right, Roach is on the left. He's down 12 workers, though. Mana is up so far in the economy. Now that he's rallying probes over there, Bly has to catch him out. There's a few Stalkers. A split here. Stalker on the left goes down. The Stalkers and the Immortal on the right side are getting picked up. But no, oh my god, they're getting picked off a little bit. No battery in the natural. He has to save those units. He never repowered the battery on the third. Oh god, get out, get out. He's got to evacuate. Evac Evacuate, evacuate Mana. He saves the Immortal and the Stalker from the, the left side, but a lot of the probes are going down. Oh no, this is a disaster. Mana just getting caught out of position multiple times. His Dark Templar hasn't gone in, but there's a spine. He can't go in, can he? Oh man, and there's an Overseer here. Bly was so far behind on economy, he had to get damaged desperately, but Mana just caught, caught, split apart with his pants down a little bit, and I like it. Bly did some really fancy stuff game one. This time he's like, I'm going to make a Roach and Ling and then shove it in. And you're like, okay, um, how about I'm gonna make Protoss lasers and then I'm gonna blaze it. At, at this point, I don't know if they're having some sort of weird poetry wrap off or something. I, I don't know what this thing is that they're, they're speaking. I definitely wouldn't call it trash talk, more like cringe talk, but uh, that's absolutely a transcript of what they were shouting to each other from uh, from neighboring countries, Poland and the Ukraine. Uh, Dark Templar is gonna run in the natural, chance to get some damage here. Gotta focus the drones down, one, two, three and pull back i love it just uses his shields gets out of there nicely done oh, oh but look he's trying to surround him Bly's trying to surround him so you move on top and you hold position and then that's going to buy you time until the overseer gets there you just got to make sure you box the units in hold position if you hold position the overseer it's going to stop getting there sexy move from Bly. um and, and the thing is even though his economy is like not good he, he kept mana on two base. So effectively they're at the same level of mining, right? It's like very similar. Mana had a bit more mining. Bly had a bit more mining. But now he's going Mutalisks. And that's going to be amazing. Nine Mutas are going to cause big problems. Stargate's trying to build because mana's like, okay, you shoved roaches. I That's always followed up by Mutalisks. If you're playing at a high enough level, anytime a Zerg is like silly aggressive with just unupgraded roach Zergling in this matchup, you always know there's Mutalisks coming. This is why a lot of Protoss players will just blind go one or two Stargates after holding off an attack like that. The thing is, the reason it's such a crap move is what else does he have? He's got like a pretty peasant army right now. He's like, oh, you got a Sentry and an Archon. I got four Immortals and nine Stalkers. Like, it's not a great force. Oh God, oh God, there's a lot of Mutas, man. Yeah, just ignore the Stalkers, kill the probes, go to the natural. The Stargate only just finished. He can start building Phoenix, but he's got to just defend with Stalkers for now. Ooh, Bly's actually losing quite a few Mutalists. I thought he'd keep the number up. He's kind of sacrificing them for probe kills. I didn't mind it at first, but get out of there. Get out of there, man. He's only getting like four or five more probes to, to lose four or five more Mutalists. Or actually, he's going to lose every one of the nine Mutas. Oh, no way, man. He, he could have killed 14 probes and still had seven Mutas present on the map, which means... He has to build cannons or leave stalkers defending his bases or build phoenix. But if you throw those Mutalists away, Mana now gets to go, cool, I just focus on ground. I, mean, I only build an Oracle for scouting, so I'll scout if you, you know, go back into Mutalisks. But otherwise, I'm just going to focus on Immortals, Archons, Stalkers, and just try to hang on. He's way behind, don't get me wrong. There's 34 Roaches, 6 Ravages, 51 Zerglings. And I think the fact that Bly is so committed to this, like I said earlier, you know, my instincts as a player, whenever I'm casting Bly, is, is I get confused. Because I'm like, well, okay, you're ahead. Make workers get more ahead. Eli's um, instinct is give him a wet willy. That's that's literally all his instinct is, right? Oh, I'm ahead? What's the best way I can give him a wet willy? Right now, he thinks shoving with Roach Ravager Zergling. I want to see him break those force fields. A lot of his army gets split. Three or four Roaches and about 15 Zerglings. They all get gunned down up there. Really good defensive positioning from Mana. He's out of force fields right now. The Archon and the Immortal getting ferried to the back. Great hot pickups here by Mana. Battery overcharge in the back. The positioning is splendid. Bly had so many more units in him. His army supply was like tripled. And yet Mana's going to hold. Oh no, he flies the prism with an Immortal into the Biles. It was an almost perfect hold. And then he loses that prism at the tail end of it. Nonetheless, though, I got to say, and the Oracle comes out, he's looking for a Ravager. Maybe gets a second one as well. Ravagers are expensive. Well worth Mana's micro there, but the Transfuse saves it. Well done. Still only on 46 workers. He has a fourth base up to his Bly. Did he transfer workers this game? Yes, he did. He should transfer from his natural as well. Um, oh, Ling's got in. Ling's got in. What the hell? Okay, Ling's got into the natural. Good stack on the probes. He's not really killing anything. Oh, wait, Roach, Roach Ravager's ugly on, on the left. Oh, God. 
Oh god, he's gonna have to micro his heart out with this prism. Hopefully he's got the main and natural already handled so Mana can put his attention down here. Mana is fighting like a beast, trying to survive. He has had a rough early game. My god, the value he's getting out of this Immortal Archon! He's just so outnumbered in every one of these fights. Yeah, this is this is the sort of fight where I, you know the, the player's like, no, it's such an unfair matchup. But it's like you got to realize, like, like Protoss players, like, look, you just even with all that micro mana loses. But I got to say, I, I think the Zerg player is going. I can't believe they can defend while down at like a third or a quarter of the army supply multiple times. <laughs> are also going to be saying something. This is the sort of game you watch these two play where both, both like like uh, the, the players who are salty on both sides of the matchup are complaining about the bullshit the other player can do. Mana with his disgusting micro on his defense, Bly with just the waves of BS that he throws at his opponent. Uh, what an entertaining matchup this is, dude. That Ling run by gets a stalker. Oh, second one. Oh wait, where are these roaches coming from? That seems a bit derby. Bly? Guys, Bly's down in supply. Guys, Bly has traded 3,000 resources less effective. He has never droned up. He's now building eight more mutilisks. Is Bly throwing this game? Is he gonna get 2 0 I mean, it's been fun and I still appreciate it, but <laughs> come on. I love, by the way, that he's spread creep. Just this one schlong going down the left side of the map. The giant tentacle with four testes in the top of the map. That one. <laughs> Now I can't unsee it. It's even got like the little curve to the to the to the head there. Oh my lord. Anyway, sorry for being gross, guys. Um, seven drones coming. Okay, so he's finally droning up his Bly, and he is building Mutilus, which is great. But the Phoenix are building now, so I don't know if Mutas are really going to be that great. And it feels like Bly here uh, may be overcommitted. I think attacking from the left with his whole army. I think he should have attacked from both sides when he did that first giant attack here because he got blocked by force fields and then mana retreated behind his mineral line so well like mana's positioning has been absolutely mint mutalisks have to get out of there there's only one or two phoenix so he can't really chase down the mutalisks oh he's not watching nicely done he lost nine muters early didn't lose any muters there kills a phoenix mana's gonna take a fourth base though mana's only down five workers and I, I i'm like what do you do to finish the game as bly he's gonna try and go mass mutalisk which is not a bad play if you're ahead on income but usually to do that, you need to get up to uh, 10 gases. He doesn't even have his 7th and 8th gases mining yet. He will soon, but I mean, it's, it's not on a big economy. Oracle does get sniped. Great catch. These muters are really causing problems. There's only 11 stalkers and 2 phoenix. Good blinkbacks though. And he's going to take out ooh, 2 probes with the bounce damage on the way out and the disengage. Very nicely done. Plus 2's coming in for mana, whereas the first upgrade melee, as well as a baneling nest coming in for Bly. So Bly's going to play mass lingbane muter, which is not a bad style. Oh, he's looking for a Mutilus. Uh, an Immortal pick off. He gets it. But the Prism saves the second one. I like the way he's bullying him with the Mutilisks. I definitely want to see a fifth base, though. Whenever you're in a Muta game like this, you really want to be like, take an early fifth, take a macro hatchery, because you're not going to macro perfectly because there is non-stop microing with those Mutas. Oh, God. Four Phoenix and a pack of Stalkers do very well. The Phoenix damage is rather wild. The Mutas kill... Do they kill one Phoenix? No, they've still only killed that first Phoenix that they got. And now 15 Mutalists have died in total. That's six more Mutas have gone down in the last two minutes. Lings come in. They get only a single probe. I like that Bly's always so active with that. But as I said, I, I'd like to see more bases. He's going to take the middle base, interesting. Does he have any Roaches left? He's still got 20 Roaches. So it's not really Lingbane Muta. It will be Ravager Lingbane on the ground, but he's stopped building Mutas now. And this is actually a good idea. You've shown yourself spiraling out of control with muters. You force him to go Phoenix range, mass Phoenix production. And guess what? That's not going to help much against Ravager Ling Bane. Technically, you can pick up some Ravagers and Banelings, but that's very low impact. The Ravager Banelings is going to roll over your ground before that happens. And look at this. And, and, and Bly's kind of bullying him. Gets a Phoenix. Pulls back. That's going to scare him into building even more Phoenix. Two more Phoenix on the way. Chrono boosting them. And the fact that he's doing that rather than Disruptors or Storm, which is what he needs. He needs Archon, Storm, Disruptors to defend the Ravager Bane. I really like this transition from Bly. This is very clever. On the other hand, Mana's already made magic happen this game. And I would not be surprised if with just batteries and Archons and spreads and micro, he finds a way to hold on, especially with that plus three attack coming in on the Forge. He's done really well. If he can get the Phoenix out there, stop building Phoenix, send your Phoenix out, hunt the Muters down, um, that could be good. But look, the Muters are still finding value. In a game where there's Phoenix on the map, I think Bly's being a bit too aggressive and he's about to get punished. Yeah, he's going to kill a few Stalkers. So he gets like three Stalkers, but look, they're dead now. There is no escape. He's going to turn around and try to kill a single Phoenix. But look at the range now. Plus two range on those Phoenix. And one of them almost dies, but that's it. Notice Mana's trying to pull back that red point. One, he still loses it though. Even with the preemptive micro, Transfuse on the Mutalist, not going to be enough. And uh, Hydroden goes down. Bly's got to go though. 
Actually, he's not maxed. How is Bly still not maxed? Like, he's only on 64 workers, isn't he? He's once again... Oh, I swear, Bly is just allergic to being ahead in economy. On the other hand, he has 48 Banelings. He's making 16 Ravages. <laughs> oh, the beauty of Bly. Okay, he's got Banelings on the left. They're going to hit this base. Banelings on the right are going to try to get in the natural if the door's down, which it is. And he's got a big army on the front. Oh, God. Stuff's about to hit the fan. Stuff is about to hit the fan right now. This army on the front's not... Oh, it's a distraction. Good pro pull. Good pro pull. But look. Oh, no. The probes are pulling in. And Banelings rolled in the front into that mineral line. Not to mention these probes run in there. They realize, wait, there's Banelings there to greet us. The probes divert back to the front base. Banelings getting 26 workers. And guess what? Bly just pulls back with his main army. He's like, yeah, let's not overcommit here. Now, funnily enough, guys, he still hasn't made a range upgrade. He still has not made plus two melee. He's making 11 Hydras right now. Plus two melee does finally start and the Hydra movement speed starting, but not the Groove Spines. So Bly is basically like, he's so up in supply and army supply, but his upgrades suck. If there was Psy Storm in this game, I, I honestly feel six High Templar with Psy Storm, even at this supply count, Bly cannot win the game. Like I think he would actually be 100% dead. Bane the Cocoons do get caught by the Phoenix. Phoenix are gonna give really good vision advantage, but notice now that the Hydras are here, they can't, like he was like, okay, time to pick up Ravages and the Hydras are gonna kill them. Oh no, Mana loses one, two, Two Phoenix go down, a third one almost falls as well. This mineral line, he's got to run those probes, run those probes. I like the sentry warp, and that's actually really cute. Realizing, okay, I need something to hang on here right now against this massive Banelings. Good spreads here as well. The Phoenix trying to pick up. The Phoenix are getting shot down, which will open up the transition back into Muters. Banelings there. Banelings on the south as well. Oh, okay. That's actually a good army versus army battle, which Mana won. But now Bly runs away with the Ravager Hydra, and he kills another 42, 42 probes? Wait, 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 42? He's killed 130 probes this game? <laughs> and Mana's killed six? The joy of playing against Bly, ladies and gentlemen. He may not have a bigger economy than you, pretty much ever, until Banelings come out, and then he will make a bigger economy than you simply by killing your workers. Some Zergs make more workers than you. Bly just kills his opponent's workers. That's how this man develops an economy advantage, and he ties up the series one-to-one. -one. All right, all right, all right. Game three to decide the series. Bly's in the bottom left now. And his phone in the top right is Mana. What the heck is going on? We've got a probe coming across from, from Mana. He's going to try and block the 16 hatchery going down. Looks like he should get there just barely in time. This is a big map. Hatchery should go down on 48 seconds. But he gets there at like 45. Yeah, yeah, no worries. As long as he's on top of the drone, he's fine. So he gets there with plenty of time. Bly diverts the drone. Oh, is he gonna, he's going to try to hatch block again. He couldn't get it down last game, so he might try it again. Keep in mind, there is a two mineral uh, patch gold base, which is like just a slight boost base on this map. Uh, or, sorry, three actually. Oh, there's a third one. Oh, four. It's a four mineral patch. I thought I don't know why. One, two, three. Yeah, it's, it's two heavy, two light patches. Oh, he's going to try to go for the block. He's got a spawning pool at home as well. Oh, wait, wait, what? Wait, wait. Okay, so it's pool first into a hatchery. And then he's just going to attack the probe with his drone. Oh, that's cute. I mean, a drone does beat a probe because it instantly regenerates, whereas a probe, even though it regens faster, it only regens when it, it's out of combat. Oh, he gets the gas down. Okay, so he disrupts the build with the gas steal again. This time, Mana didn't screw up by rallying to gas, but he actually kind of screwed up by oversaturating minerals, which means his gas is a little late. But out of any small mistakes you're going to make in the early game, that's the better one to make. Now, he's also going Cybercore second pylon Zealot. Oh, does he not realize the hatchery's down? This is not that early of a spawning pool, so I think Bly's actually getting a pretty big overreaction out of mana, I would argue. On the other hand, he stayed one gas. His Nexus is delayed 20, 20 seconds or so. That's not the end of the world. Against the pool first, you do want to go Cybercore before Nexus, but I think if you don't build the Zealot, you can just go Cybercore, um, and then you can then you can start the Nexus, then the Pylon, and then Chrono and Adept out in time. Um, well, he definitely could have in this case, because Bly's waiting. Bly, Bly with the Overlord is like, eh, you got a Zealot? And he's... Oh, I think he was hoping an Adept would pop out and he would catch the first Shade with a Surround or something like that. But now he's... But it's actually a second Zealot building, not an Adept. What the hell? Double Zealot defense. Oh, because Mana knows about the proxy hatch inside the main base. So he wants a Zealot to deal with it. Ah, okay. And a Stargate coming up. This has actually been really well handled. Yeah, I think he's, he's perfectly fine. He's got, a, he's got a Zealot there. He definitely should be building an Adept. He's going to start a Shield Battery inside the main base. I don't know if that's really necessary. I think a shield battery in the main is, is not necessary, but I guess it takes 30 seconds to build. Zerglings only take, I think, 17 seconds to build. Oh, oh, Zealot, be careful. Well, now that he's damaged the Zerglings, he can actually beat those Zerglings um, just barely, I believe, in a fight, unless he gets full surrounded. 
Robo on the way. Ah, oh, okay. So Mana's already thinking about the creep tumor that could go down in his main. But I think I think he could just build an Oracle to deal with that. I think going Stargate and Robo, Mana is a bit nervous right now, potentially. He's kind of like uh, getting a little bit excited because now he doesn't have the gas to actually build an Oracle or a Void Ray. This is actually, and Bly, is Bly droning? Bly's up on 25 drones. He's got Ling Speed started behind this. He's not committing that much. He is building some Zergans, don't get me wrong. He is committing a bit. Oh, the BL battery. He gets back to the battery, but only with one of the Zealots. The other Zealot gets surrounded. Okay, so Mana can defend his man. No, no, Mana! Mana! Oh, no! Okay, Bly didn't block him. Bly didn't block him. He gets back to the shield battery. Nicely done. Oh, Void Ray is on the way getting Chrono Boosted right now. The Robo does finish, which, of course, can clear up the Creep Tumors, which is nice. Where's the Adept right now, guys? Where The Adept just died. Did he just go in with the... He went in with the Adept to harass Mana. The ball's on this guy. He figured he'd catch Bly with no defense at home. Probes will be able to defend those Zerglings. Zealot and the Voidray will take out the Queen. Probes could defeat those Lings. Good pullback by Bly. This game's a hot mess right now. Bly is trying to distract him enough to get ahead. And look at that. Second Queen comes out. He's actually getting decent damage on the Voidray, but with the Shield Battery there, he'll be just A-OK, -okay, I think. Probes in the natural defend with another Battery. Having a Shield Battery in both expansions is a big difference maker. The Lings do a lot of damage, though. They will clear out through that Battery healing so quickly. They didn't actually get any kills. There's nothing in the wall. Luckily, Mana does wall off in time. And Bly is forced to tech up. He's got a lair on the way. He's building more Zerglings in the main, which I don't think that makes sense. But wait, he actually killed the pylon that's building. There's two Void Rays. Mana's kind of in panic mode right now. And, and Bly's dregs of Zerglings, because there's only one gateway, that Robo really not contributing anything. If he had a second gateway and just a few more Adepts, was allowed to be big, but Lings are rallying in. Oh no! Mana! Oh no! His pylon getting the battery unpowered. Oh god, his, his probes need to get out. His probes need to get out right now. Mana's in panic mode. He's got an observer to clear the creep tumors, but he's not dealing with the zerglings. I can't believe it. I was like, those extra zerglings aren't a good idea. They're not going to get anything done. Uh, Bly is like, yeah, pig, that's because you're always thinking about building an economy lead. You idiot, you cuck. He's like, mate, I'm thinking about the ultimate wet willy. I'm thinking about how to give my opponent an atomic wedgie. You're out here thinking about this cuck stuff. There's an Overlord there that he missed. Overlords both hide. Mana's so dead set on doing counter damage that he misses two free Overlord kills, which would be pretty big in these low economy scenarios. We've got a Nidus Worm on the way, but what, what's he going to put in the Nidus Worm? He doesn't have any units. Bly literally has no units. He has two Queens and nothing else. I guess it's a Queen Zergling Nidus. Funny thing is, he's going to pop his first Nidus with like six Zerglings in it and two Queens. <laughs> the Void Rays can uh, definitely get a cancel on the third base. Oh, he just activated Prismatic Alignment. Oh, Mana. Okay, Mana's in full panic mode right now. This series has been torturous, and especially after his epic almost comeback in that last game, I think he's, he's probably just a little bit scatterbrained. I know I would be playing as an unpredictable player like uh, Bly always tough. He sees a few queens, a bunch of lings. That in itself might be a little bit of a tell. Bly cancels. He's putting more lings, more queens. Nidus Worm is there. Nidus Worm's already going up. Oh, no! Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh me, oh my. Not getting rid of the overlords is actually doubly bad because now the Nidus gets to go inside his main base. The battery is here. He's going to have to activate Overcharge just to keep the Robo alive, but he doesn't have any fighting units. He's got three Void Rays and nothing else. Where's the other Void Ray? It's over there. Okay, so he's got three Void Rays. Probe's going to try to fight, which with the battery healing, they can kind of hold in the mineral line. A-OK. -okay. Void Rays in the Zealot taking some damage up. The Zealot gets around. The Void Ray rallies into the Queens. Oh, he needed that. He needed to defend this because he's playing two Stargates. He needs to defend with Void Ray count, guys. He needed to get up four Void Rays so he could fight the Queen's head on with the battery. But he already had to use Overcharge to keep the Robo powered in the main base. And that might have been a mistake. Maybe he should have just let the Robo get depowered. The Zealot getting worked on by those Queens. He's going to focus down the Overseer. That does allow his Observer to stay up for them now. But the Spore Crawlers are about to finish. Spore Crawler Queen inside the main base. There's so few Zergans. There's a Hydroden building behind this for Bly. But he's got links in the natural. He's only on 30 drones. Who needs to build an economy when you can just basically dip your wet willy into your opponent's ear? And in this case, he may have been using the actual willy because this is a Zerg player we're talking about. Let's be real. They're slimy. They're gross. And they absolutely do not... Like, like, like if a Zerg player ran a restaurant, they would be in trouble with, uh, with, with the, the food safety, uh, you know, uh, administration in whatever country they're in. It, it'd be a big issue, man. They'd be like, oh, why is there uh, this viscous goo on the uh, food preparation surfaces? Belize-like, because that's how I like it, mate. Everything needs to be lubricated at all times. 
Um, that's essentially what creep is for as well. Just lubes your feet up a little bit. The Hydras and the Queens are inside. I mean, what can Mana do? He's got a few Stalkers. He's got a few Voidra. Is that Voidra in the right? It's going to go down. Oh, run, 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 run. Another Voidra falls. Spore Crawlers and Hydras inside your main base. That's not a good feeling. There's just no damage output for Mana. And that is so rough. I really think that Robo was just jumping the gun. I think if he just didn't build the Robo, maybe builds a second gateway for a bit more gateway production, but basically just non-stop produces off his one gate and his Stargate, I think he could have defended. But as it is, Bly with the killer instinct, he knows how to keep pressing the advantage and finishing it off, and he does it so well. Battery overcharge on the Void Ray seems pretty good, but remember, all your probes have now died. Actually, was this a screw up going? No, he's just, look, battery overcharge is going to run out, and then the Void Rays will fall. Another Nidus Worm in the natural. The Lings are going to do the wrap around here. They're also starting to break down the production. More Hydras popping out. The Void Rays are deep in the orange. They've all lost their shields, and those Hydras are going absolutely ham. Queens on the right side, Omega Tanky. There's no damage for Protoss. Queens are a conundrum in this early stage because there's just no damage. You need a pack of Archons or Zealots or something. I mean, you need you need a good little ball of damage output, and that is just something Mana has not been able to get up, especially with this two Stargate play. He was incredibly vulnerable to that Nidus Worm. What a friggin' awesome series, though. That was so much fun. Thank you, Bly, for continuing to deliver absolute nuggets of joy. Can you guys believe he is a full-time employee who only shows up for qualifiers of big tournaments? And he still plays this well. What a friggin' savage. GG, well played.